On this trip, I get to fish with a couple of my very best friends, Chris Ullman and Corey McGuire. Chris Ullman is one of my best friends. We grew up together fishing, and it's not often that we get to get out and fish a whole lot together anymore. Uh, the same thing with, with Corey. You know, I've known Corey McGuire since he was probably 12 years old, and he's become one of the very best guides in this area in Southwest Florida. So for me to get a chance to get out and fish with two of my real good buddies is awesome, but uh, it, it's also a, a really special thing for the three of us because it, as long as the three of us have all known each other, oddly enough, we've never all three fished together at the same time on the same boat. So something that I was really looking forward to, It'd be a really great time. My name's Captain Corey McGuire. I'm a full-time guide out here on Pine Island. Uh, me and Witt and Zolman grew up together. I met them fishing tournaments when I was probably about 12 years old. For me, I've been so busy guiding that I really don't get a chance to catch fish for myself anymore as much as I'd like to. So it was kind of a nice treat to get to go on the boat and not have to rig everybody else's rods and you know, just dig in the bait well and fish and you know, just hang out with the guys. Uh, Corey's been one of the top guides in the area for a while now, really knows his business, uh, knows these waters like the back of his hand. Uh, it's just a real treat for somebody like myself to get out with these guys and get a chance to get out and really put it to it. So I've been traveling all over this year and, and, and visited some amazing places, but to get back home onto my home waters, place that I know and love so much, it kind of made it a little more special and, and made me realize a little bit, you know, how great of a place this is and, and the fishery in Southwest Florida. We're so fortunate to have Charlotte Harbor and Pine Island Sound, it's such a diverse fishery and uh, you know, to have that in our backyard, there's just so many bait fish and fish that congregate in this area due to all the water flow and you know Charlotte Harbor has the Peace and the Mayaka River that dump into it you know which turns into Pine Island Sound and Boca Grand Pass and Captiva Pass and Redfish Pass there's just incredible water movement and there's just you know so many natural places whether it's grass flats or creeks and estuaries for those fish to grow up in and that's why this is really a thriving fishery. We're staying at Tarpon Lodge. Good friends of mine, the Wells, own this place, and uh, it's a really cool, unique little old Florida resort tucked along the west side of Pine Island, overlooking the northern part of Pine Island Sound. Uh, and this is where we'd be fishing from for this trip, and an incredible and perfect location to, to fish from as far as accessibility to Charlotte Harbor, uh, Pine Island Sound itself, and the Gulf of Mexico. We got, got ready to go in the morning and the wind was up a little bit, but for all intents and purposes, the weather looked like it was gonna be perfect. And, and for what we were trying to do, you know, this area is known for its inshore fishery and its tarpon fishing. What it's not quite as well known for is the near shore, offshore stuff just off the barrier islands in the Gulf of Mexico. For what we're going to do and 90% and of the fishing that goes on here, bait plays a huge role. And uh, when you're going offshore and you don't have a set specific plan necessarily, but you're going to kind of see what weather happens and, and, and adapt as you go, you really want to be kind of outfitted for, for whatever could happen. And that goes from your tackle all the way to your bait. You know, you want to, we wanted to have a big variety of bait from white bait pilchers to threadfin herring to grunts for bottom fishing. And so that's a big part of the fishing here. You know, you, uh, you go fishing before you go fishing. Wild Instinct Outdoors is in partnership with Ray Marine. Go hunting underwater with Ray Marine. At first light, we go out to some of the shallower grass flats and uh, chum for white bait, scaled sardines or pilchards. And get a, a few hundred pieces of bait for the purposes of snapper fishing and also chumming and firing up the wrecks. Then once the sun gets up a little bit, the thread fins come up to the surface and dimple the water. Once we were done getting pilchards, we ran across some deeper water flats where those threads would rise with the sun and netted a couple hundred thread fin and then uh, you know got our grunts and, and went ahead to head offshore. All right, boys, what do you think? Jump out the pass and yeah, just we got start about heading that way. 22 miles. 22. We should catch that right on the tide change and then uh, fish that permit wreck first and 
try to get that over, over and done with, and then maybe run a little bit further south and try Just to do work some Cody and AJ's. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Those permit been getting up once the sun's up, right? Yeah, we need to get out there once that sun gets a little bit higher. Okay. Uh, it should be right on that tide change on that slack, so the fish should be up floating. They should be able to sight fishing. Cool, just cruise nice and easy out there. Let's roll. Yep. So I've been gone a lot. I haven't been here too much, and Corey is extremely busy, probably one of the busiest guides here. And so I was kind of using him as my eyes on the water to, to see what was going on and what we ought to do for this trip. After I got a chance to go out and look around after my, one of my trips this past week, and I text Wit and I told him, yeah, make sure you get some crabs, the place is loaded. Um, I almost didn't want to text him and tell him that because it just felt like I was putting, you know, extra pressure on it. And you just, you know, pray that when you have cameras on the boat and you have an opportunity to do something like this, you know, that it all works out. And, you know, knowing that the fish should be there, but it's fish and nothing's guaranteed. You just want to come up current of the wreck and set yeah. up and make a couple drifts through it and look? Yeah, we'll kind of split those two anchor. pieces and just drift through there. Okay. And just see what side they're on and get that figured out and maybe we'll throw the hook. We pulled up to the first spot, and even though Corey had seen a bunch of permit out there a few days beforehand, as fishermen, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily still there and that it's gonna happen. So we set up up current and upwind of the two pieces of structure and set a drift kind of down through the middle of them. And as we, as we kind of closed and got to where we were between the two pieces, we all put crabs out um, to let them kind of drift past us or us drift past them in the vicinity of the wreck. And it wasn't more than probably a minute and Corey hooked up on a nice permit. You on? There we go. It didn't take long, Corey. 30 seconds later or so, I hooked up and we were doubled on, on great permit on our very first drift. Yeah. Holy cow. Here you go. <laughs> it was definitely a, a little relief for me, and I really got to enjoy the day that much more after that. Come on up. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, come off there. I got a collar. Nice fish, Corey. Mm, nice, dude. It's a good fish. Dodge. Yes, they are. Um, if you want, yeah. keep him alive for a second. Let's tag him. Nice fish, brother. Heck yeah. It didn't take long, bro. First two casts. Beautiful. Let's tag both those because they're two different sizes. All right. So two different age groups. So I permit fish here quite a bit. And one of the things I try to do is to tag some of these fish for research. And we do this in conjunction with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission and the Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. The, the purpose of this is to gather data on these fish from everything from how big of a range they have to uh, their mortality rate after being caught and, and age and recapture. We got 22.75 inches. Okay, hold on, hold on, fin clip. We're going to. Okay, I need a vial number four. It'll be quick. Okay, cap it. Ten and a half. Ten and a half pounds. Let's get him back in the water. Give him revive, good. Wow, they're so pretty, look at all those different colors. Here. Really, these scientists and marine biologists are starving for the data. And just like anything, the more data you can bring in, the more accurate your study is. So, you know, these guys really benefit hugely from people like us collecting the data and tagging the fish. And then and, and on the other end of it, if you catch a tagged fish to make sure you report it. Wild Instinct Outdoors is in partnership with Hooters, the cure for the common restaurant. The American Barrels, live free or die, a true American spirit.
Permit are one of my very most favorite fish to pursue. Not only because they're not always here in great numbers, so it's something that when they're here, it's kind of like tarpon, you know, when they're here, you want to fish for them. But it, as far as a game fish goes, you know, they're very wily. They have incredible eyesight. They're powerful. They're extremely fast. And really, if I had to pick one fish to pursue, the permit would be right up there on the list. Corey, these fish just kind of do big loops around the structure or what? Yeah, it all depends. When that tide's running, they'll usually kind of swim a loop around it. When that tide slacks off, a lot of times they'll come up to the surface and, and float. sit right yeah. behind it or right off one side of it. But this is perfect, just a little bit of chop so we can have a nice slow drift and, and get some visual shots at the fish. Yeah. You can be out there fishing in general and literally know exactly when you have a permit on. The line getting ripped off the reel, they dig down and just really give you a battle. Yeah, we're, we're right between them right now. Hey guys, Zalman. Zalman's on. Get him, brother. Yeah, buddy. This is cool too, Corey, because it's actually kind of late in the year for this, you know? Yeah. A little later than we would normally be doing this, but when it's really happening, two of us don't ever have a day to go do it for no. fun. I'll tell you what, it was kind of fun to get to catch a fish for a change. Right? But I think I'm enjoying this just as much. There we go, we got fella That's right there. That's a good fish, bud. Nice, brother. That is a stud. Nice fish. That's bigger than the first one. Fish. Yeah. Look at his colors. God. How pretty that is. They are so strong. Such Beautiful an awesome fish. fish nice man. job, man. I had a great fish on, big permit, and I'd been fighting it for a few minutes already, you know, I was thinking that, that the fight was about over and, and all of a sudden a shark got on it. Oh, he got eaten. That's right. He's, he's over, he's over, he's over. Free spool. You want, me, you want me to take it up? In reaction, I opened the bail to let that fish get away. It made a run straight back under the boat, got wrapped in the lower unit. We had a camera guy already in the water getting some water shots of, of us fishing in. So just immediately kind of, you know, you got to react to it by the second. And I pulled my mic off real quick and, and dove in the water, got the fish out from the, from the lower unit and got back tight on it. And the fish got away from the shark and we got back in the boat and ended up landing the fish. Coming up. I had to put it in the free spool when that shark got on me, it was on, I mean, he was right on top of that fish. So I popped in free spool. When I did, the thing shot straight back under the boat. Completely changed Yeah, hey, I'm gonna take you out there, see if you can gain some line. Yeah, I did. Went from one fight to yeah, another. Me up. That was crazy. And Three seconds of mayhem. This makes this fish worth it even more so. Nice fish, dude. A little more. Got him. Oh yeah, another nice fish. <laughs> Nice that mat. is a nice mat right That's there. Had to work for that one. Beautiful fish. <laughs> doesn't get any better than that, Wit. No, it doesn't, buddy. We're lucky to get that fish. Oh. Nice work, man. He doesn't look beat up or anything, right does he? No. He got away go. clean. No, he did. He has an awesome fish, dude. Yes, it is. That was sick. <laughs> nice. Sick, dude. That nice work. Sick. I think it's it's the whole lure of permit fishing. You know, they're this really sought after game fish. They're beautiful, they're big silver fish, their eyesight's incredible and you know it's it's really it's honestly a tough fish to catch, you know. And you know, once you catch one, you know, it's really an achievement and an accomplishment. You, and it's a fish that catching one of you really appreciate. I know when I texted you the other day when I came out after my trip to look around, you know, tell you to get crabs because the place was loaded. Yeah, but that was two days ago. This fish could have left. You didn't know. Oh, could just change. The anxiety of it. You know, we had a chance of a 70% chance of rain, which ended up going down to 50, which we were fortunate. Yep. You know, and then that wind blew a little bit this morning. I was just worried that we weren't going to be able to get out here and do that. It was perfect. It's clouding cool. up now a little bit. The permit yeah. thing might be shutting off. No, I think we should probably. Let's rip it. I mean, see if we can get in some pelagics or something. Well, Let's sounds do it. good. Wild Instinct Outdoors is in partnership with XS Sight Systems, the fastest sights in any life. Boatmaster Trailers, the name that represents quality.
you know, the permanent wreck was a success. We were plain enough to leave, and I look over in the distance, and I see something. I looked over at Witt and Zolman, and they said, yeah, I thought I saw something too, but with the waves, you know, it was kind of disappearing. It was so far, we couldn't really tell what it was. And I said, well, if we don't have anything to lose, let's run over there and check it out. And when we pulled up to it, and Witt came off plane, I went up to the bow, and it was the most triple tail I've ever seen. I mean, there had to be, 15, 20 triple tail on it. You know, we immediately shut off the motor and we're all like little kids scrambling, fighting for the rod. Nobody wants to put the trolling motor in. Like, you know, we were all so excited. And for all the time we've spent on the water down here, you know, between the three of us, you know, I've just never seen anything like that. It was just a really, you know, neat way to finish off the day. Sweet. Work, man. You double up, he's on it. Sweet, dude. So sick. Good one, though. May I help you with? Yeah. I don't want to pop them off. It's pretty light. Solomon's got it. Good fish, dude. Cool, man. Some people call them triple tail. I call them dinner. Yeah, no kidding. We good at the lodge? Black and triple tail? Heck yeah. Still get a couple more? Triple tail are really cool fish. They're, they're like prehistoric looking and they are a pelagic fish. So, so they migrate in schools and, and as our water warms, they move up the coast and they, they hang on different structures from crab trap buoys to you know pieces of floating debris. They are also very well known for their table fare. They're, they're a beautiful white flaky meat fish. Dude, look at that fish laying inside of that piece of structure. Oh gosh, he's gonna eat inside the thing. He ate inside it. <laughs> that no was sick. way, oh, I'm dude. I'm gonna help you with that one. That's a good one. That's crazy. That was nuts, man. I, 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 dude, I drug the bait in, inside of it, and the one laying inside there ate it. No way. I drug him up out of there. That's a better fish. Fish. You grab him? Yeah. Wow. Nice. That's a good one, dude. Sweet. Our afternoon thunderstorms were starting to kind of build a little bit. The wind was starting to pick up a little. And I mean, let's face it, we, we have had an incredible day of fishing. So we decided, you know, we had a few fish in the cooler for dinner. We got to stumble upon uh, a little treasure chest full of triple tail out there and, and, and catch a whole bunch of them. And, uh, you know, we decided let's, let's call it a day and, and roll back into Tarpon Lodge and, and have a nice dinner and kind of relax and reminisce on, on, a, on a great day together on the water. To be able to get out with a couple of really good friends and uh, not only friends, but a couple of guys that know the sound like the back of their hand is just a real treat. As far as a fisherman goes, it makes it pretty easy on me. Um, they do most all of the work and prep, which there is a lot involved, but they know their game and uh, they know how to get it done. It was nice to just go out and catch some fish and, and hang out with my buddies. And, you know, it had been probably over a year, year and a half since me and Wade had got to fish together. And as long as I've known Zolman, we never really got a chance to fish together. It was just a really nice weekend to just kind of unwind and really get to enjoy, you know, the whole experience. and. Looking forward to doing this, you know, watching you know, all the witch shows and all the different places. And I was just kind of like, man, I hope he does a show back home and asks me, you know. When he called me up the other day, it was cool. And I was really looking forward to it. And looking back at it, it makes us realize how lucky we are to have this as our backyard. And, you know, how much fun it is just to go hang out with your buddies and catch some fish. For me to get to come back home, come out and stay at Tarpon Lodge and fish with two of my very best friends, uh, you know, this was one of my favorite trips of the year.